Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And in this video, I'm going to be addressing one question that I get asked all the time, and that is, how deep should my wildlife pond be? Now, there's a range of answers to this question, but uh, I'm going to look at uh, a couple of options, if you like, today, depending on the situation, depending on um, what sort of a, a size garden you've got, what sort of size water body you're going to look to create. So. First things first, if we look at this pond, for example, this is one that I am uh, cleaning out in Surrey in England, and it's one that is uh, probably 20, 30 years old, actually. I'm not entirely sure, but you can see it's concrete lined, and it's actually cracking. You know, the, the concrete that was used to line this pond is cracking, so it does actually leak quite a bit. Um, it has been holding water, and since the, uh, the recent rains we've had over the last few days, um, it has topped it back up, and actually we've collected which we're temporarily rehousing in a big uh, container over in the corner. Uh, probably 30 to 40 smooth newts, male and female, that have come out of this water body, which isn't, isn't huge. In fact, if I stand up and just show you, um, it's probably only maybe four or five metres across um, and sort of three or four metres in width. Um, so it's a good sized one, really good. It's a great, if I was going to suggest a size for a pond I would say sort of five by three meter pond as a minimum if you can I know space doesn't always permit on um, or in certain situations however if you can five by three meter pond is, is great but as for the depth this one isn't very deep it's probably only about 18 inches deep which isn't really deep enough if you are looking to um, you know create a water body that's going to last a long time which of course you won't want to be doing one of these uh twice i'm sure in your own garden when you're going to do it you're going to want to do it once uh so what i would suggest is is getting to a minimum depth of 60 centimeters of actual water body now if you're following the uh, methods that i use and that is to excavate your pond uh, to put in a layer of fleece under lay a layer of liner and then another layer of fleece and then some subsoil on top. And if you haven't seen uh, my uh, three part series on how to make a wildlife pond, then do check that out. I will put a link in at the end of this video uh, that you can click on because it is really a kind of a comprehensive how to as to how you can make your own wildlife pond uh, and you can adapt it to whatever kind of size uh, you want to go to. Excuse the plane noise, um, flight path into uh, Heathrow. So uh, <laughs> yeah. One or two planes going over but um in terms of the body it's of water itself by the time you've you've dug everything out by the time you've got your water back in after your subsoil you want to have a minimum of 60 centimeters or two foot if you work in imperial um then you want two foot of water 60 centimeters 600 millimeters same thing uh in the middle of your pond even it doesn't have to be the whole of the pond of course it could just be uh, a small section in the middle just to help keep the water cool basically there's a couple of reasons that um, that this is beneficial. One is because in the winter time, it completely stops your pond from freezing over, which unless we get a really, 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 really heavy frost, which in the UK, we don't usually get below sort of minus four, minus five on a bad night. So um, you really want to try and get that depth just to, to prevent the whole thing from freezing over. Obviously, the shallower the water, the more chance there is of things freezing over. Not that that's the end of the world, because um, I've actually had a, a friend of mine, uh, Tracy Pye, who does some great videos of her own wildlife garden on YouTube. Uh, she filmed a, a pair of frogs mating back in February this year that actually got completely frozen over. And I mean completely frozen solid. There was just a, a small vi a video she posted online uh, on YouTube of these frogs just f suspended, motionless, completely surrounded by ice. Of course, she was very concerned about them, went out the next day, they'd gone. And apparently I then learned that um, frogs can actually uh, stop their heart and everything completely, um, so pretty much die, uh, and then kickstart themselves back to life when temperatures warm up. So, I mean, what an incredible fact that is. What an amazing thing to be able to do. Um, but uh, obviously they prefer to not freeze completely, I'm sure, if you if you could ask them. So one thing I would say is get your pond as deep as you physically can. Now, when you're making a pond 60 centimetres deep, obviously you want to consider how steep the sides are. Now, for a wildlife pond, you really want to have 
um, shallow sides, uh, sorry, uh, gentle slopes on the sides of your pond and shallow margins to enable things to crawl in and out. So um, obviously the newts, the, the toads, the frogs, uh, but also things like hedgehogs. So many hedgehogs, unfortunately, die from dropping into a formal pool or swimming pool. Of course, the swimming pools are bad for wildlife, really, because they often have vertical sides. Nothing can get back out once it, when it drops back in. I've even seen newts uh, drown in swimming pools because, of course, they just get exhausted. Newts need to breathe air, so although they live underwater, they have to come up and surface for air. Um, same as frogs. So they have to come to the surface. And of course, if they have nothing to rest on, if they have no vegetation, no rocks, no anything like that, they can just drop straight to the bottom uh, and just be exhausted and drown, unfortunately. Sorry to let you know that, but you know, I think it's uh, an important point to discuss um, when you're thinking about making a wildlife pond, or in fact, if you're thinking of having a swimming pool, just cover it over, make sure nothing can get um, in or out, because, uh, or certainly if, you, if they can get in, if you can't cover it, put some stones or branch or something up the side so things can crawl out. So I digress slightly, but it's all it's all part of the kind of thought process between uh, around how deep your pond should be. So shallow margins, gentle slope insides, but to achieve that 60 centimetre depth, sometimes you have to build them back up. And again, the how to make a wildlife pond video is going to explain this into to you in full detail. Uh, but the way I do them with a fleece line of fleece and the subsoil, I build like a mini well, if you like, or dry stone wall coming out the middle just to retain that subsoil so you're not left looking at a wall of fleece um, if your sides are quite steep. The sides down to the bottom can be steep. That's not a problem at all. It's all about the margins and how um, shallow you make them uh, just to make sure that wildlife can get in and out. So if I come over this side and just show you a view back, you can actually see uh, this pond is a pretty good example, to be fair. Uh, you have got a deeper section here. Um, again, the, the steepness on this side is not an issue because uh, there is a shallow end on that side where things can get in and out quite easily. Um, the other downside to having a shallow pond is, um, well, goat willow is a bad example because goat willow will grow almost anywhere. Um, so, uh, But uh, the more shallow you have your pond, the more likely it is, like this one, which is the whole point I was making about this video, um, is it's just got a mat of vegetation. You can see where I've just chopped away a little bit in the corner. Uh, but that is just a mat of vegetation across the whole bottom of the pond and there was actually very little water body left in here so when your water is shallow it's going to warm up a lot quicker so things like blanket weed are going to establish a lot quicker um, because it's just getting warmer blanket weed loves warm conditions that's the long stringy stuff you see in a pond um, so there's many reasons why you should go for as deep a pond as possible if you can obviously people come to me a lot of the time and say well i've got kids i don't want them running into it well, absolutely, we have to be careful around deep water, although there's plenty of lakes and uh, ponds and rivers in the wild, and uh, it was certainly a learning curve for me. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's good to teach kids the respect for water from an early age. If they're not exposed to it, if they're not exposed to any danger whatsoever, and we wrap them in cotton wool, it's not going to do them any favours when they get older. So um, so having shallow margins is, is essential for the wildlife, but it also helps, obviously, for, for kids to be able to get close to have a look at these fantastic little spaces as well. Um, but equally, for when you dig in a pond, if you can go a bit deeper, if you can get to maybe um, 90 centimetres, then it's better for toads. Toads prefer deeper bodies of water to actually breed in. Uh, and toads, the toad spawn is this fantastic sort of long stringy stuff, if you haven't seen it already. Um, so toads prefer a deeper body of water if you can. So there are benefits to going deeper, of course. And the deeper you go, as I say, the cooler the water is going to stay uh, and prevent the blanket weed, obviously, from uh, from establishing itself. You're not going to continually stop blanket weed from moving in. There'll be little bits that sprout around the margins. But the bigger the water body, the deeper the water body, the cooler the water will be and the less blanket weed you'll have. So I think, hopefully, that's given you a bit of an idea as to what depth to go to. Um, obviously, if you haven't got that big an area, as I say, using the methods explained in the uh, three-part series, uh, How to Make a Wildlife Pond on the channel, um, you can see how you can make even a, a smaller two by three meter pond. I would say it's probably the minimum size if you're going to uh, have a go at doing one of these because any smaller than that, it gets very difficult to get everything in and, and you know, things are gonna warm up. It's like if you put, um, you know, fill up a bucket of water, it warms up so quickly. But of course, if you can't dig a hole in the ground, if you're in rented accommodation, you're on a balcony, 
don't despair you can still have a mini pond i've got two on my on my patio and they are wildlife barrel ponds so if you haven't seen those already go to the uh, wildlife pond section on the channel or just uh, have a look down the videos list you'll find how to make a wildlife barrel they are of course a brilliant resource still attract damselflies dragonflies god knows how but i still get newts and frogs in my barrel ponds and the sides are sort of at this angle you know um i'm putting some rocks and some uh branches in as well to make sure there's access in and out for anything if it does climb up there and drop in obviously newts frogs they are good climbers and jumpers so uh how to make a barrel pond check that out there are many ways in which you can make a water body for wildlife and of course a pond is the best thing you can put in your garden for wildlife so any questions guys please feel free to drop them in the comments below i'll do my best to answer them i'm rushed off my feet with jobs at the moment i'm all over the place i've been to scotland um recently looking at some works i'm literally here there and everywhere so apologies if the comments are a little bit longer to uh, get replied to but uh, I am doing my best and um, thank you very much again for the support. Really appreciate it. Uh, please feel free to like the video if you've um, enjoyed the video and of course subscribe to the channel. Those of you that keep coming back regular and regular, if you want to see more updates, hit that subscribe button and I promise you I'll be bringing you lots of content on how to make wildlife ponds, how to maintain them and many more topics on how to attract wildlife to your own gardens. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you soon.